Football should be fun for everyone, but it is more fun when you are in good shape and injury-free, able to play the whole 90 minutes without any problems. The 11 can play a significant role in terms of prevention and preparation. There are 10 very easy exercises, while the 11th is concerned with fair play. It is important that these exercises are done regularly in order to build up muscle balance. Most football injuries affect the lower extremities, the legs. Such injuries can range from simple ankle sprains to torn knee ligaments, torn thigh muscles, particularly to the muscles at the back of the leg, and even hamstring and groin strains. When selecting the 10 exercises that make up the 11, we focused on the problem areas, in other words, the areas where most injuries occur, and research has shown that these 10 exercises cover these areas. But while the exercises are very easy, they must be done correctly. You will need to learn them off by heart by investing time, studying the exercises, asking for explanations, and continually watching the DVD until you have a routine that will almost allow you to do the exercises in your sleep. The 11 should be part and parcel of every footballer's daily routine, in much the same way as brushing your teeth three times a day. Before you start the exercises, warm up and stretch the most important muscle groups. It is especially important that you stretch the muscles in your thigh and lower leg. The first of the ten exercises is called the bench. This exercise stabilizes and strengthens the core muscles. It works on the muscles in your back and stomach. Assume the starting position by lying on your stomach and supporting your upper body with your arms. Position your toes so that your feet are at right angles to the ground. Now lift your knees, pelvis and stomach so that your back and pelvis are in a straight line with your shoulders and parallel to the ground. Only your forearms and the tips of your feet should now be touching the ground. Your elbows should be directly under your shoulders during the whole exercise. Tighten your abdominal muscles and buttocks. Do not let your stomach drop. Now, pull your shoulder blades towards the center of your back so that your shoulder blades are level with your back. Hold this position and lift your right leg a few centimeters off the ground. Hold this position for 15 seconds. Now, return to the starting position, relax, and repeat the exercise by lifting your left leg. During this exercise, make sure that your head, shoulders, back and pelvis are in a straight line. Your elbows are directly under your shoulders. Your head does not tilt backwards. Your lower back does not drop. You do not move your pelvis upwards. When lifting your leg, your pelvis does not tilt to the side. Exercise number two is the sideways bench. This exercise strengthens your lateral abdominal muscles to increase core stability. Assume the starting position by lying on your side with your legs extended so that your whole body is in a straight line. Now support your upper body with one arm. 
Bend your lower knee to a 90 degree angle and tighten your upper leg all the way to the tips of your toes. The tips of your feet should be pointing forwards. Support your upper arm by resting your hand on your hip. Your elbows, hips, both knees and the foot of your upper leg should now be in a straight line. Make sure that your lower knee does not jut forwards. Now, lift your pelvis and your upper leg until they are in a straight line with your upper shoulder. Keep your head upright. During this exercise, your elbow should be directly below your shoulder. Hold this position without tilting your body forwards or backwards. Keep your body tense at all times. Hold this position for 15 seconds and continue to breathe normally. Now, return to the starting position, relax and repeat the exercise. Swap sides and hold the final position twice for 15 seconds each time. During this exercise, make sure that your upper shoulder, hips and upper leg are in a straight line. Your elbow is directly under your shoulder. Your head does not rest on your shoulder. Your pelvis does not drop. Your shoulders, hips, pelvis or legs do not tilt forwards or backwards. Exercise 3 is called hamstrings. This exercise strengthens the hamstring and balances the strength ratio between the muscles at the front and rear of the thigh. Kneel down with your knees hip width apart, keeping your upper body upright and crossing your arms across your breast. Your lower leg should be on the floor, hip width apart. Your partner should now kneel behind you and with both hands grip your lower legs just above the ankles while placing his whole body weight on your legs. During this exercise, your thigh, hips and upper body should be in a straight line. Make sure that you do not bend the hips. Now, lean forward slowly with your upper body straight and your hips stretched and try to hold this straight body alignment with your hamstrings. When you can no longer hold this position, allow yourself to fall forwards and use your hands to catch yourself. As this exercise places considerable strain on your lower legs, it is important that your partner uses his full body weight so that you can concentrate on the exercise. Repeat the exercise five times. For this exercise, pay attention to the following. Your partner must keep your ankles firmly on the ground. Your upper body, hips and thighs should be in a straight line. Do not bend the hips. Your head should not tilt backwards. Do this exercise slowly at first, but once you feel more comfortable, speed it up. The fourth exercise is called cross-country skiing. This exercise strengthens the leg muscles and helps to prevent injuries to the knees and ankles. Begin by standing on one leg. Let your other leg hang relaxed. Bend your knee and hips slightly so that your upper body leans forward. When viewed from the front, the foot, knee and hip of your supporting leg should be in a straight line. Now, flex and extend the knee of the supporting leg and swing your arms in opposite directions in the same rhythm. Keep your pelvis and upper body stable and facing forward. Flex the knee as much as possible, keeping your weight balanced on your whole foot and not just on the ball of your foot. Do not lock the knee and do not let the knee of your supporting leg buckle inwards. Flex and extend the leg 15 times. Then change legs and repeat the whole exercise 15 times.
For this exercise, it is important that, from the front, the hip, knee and foot of your supporting leg are in a straight line. Your upper body and pelvis are stable and facing forward, your pelvis does not tilt to the side, your knee does not buckle inwards. Your weight is balanced across the whole foot. Exercise number five, chest passing in single leg stance. With this exercise, we will work on your coordination and balance while strengthening your leg muscles to prevent ankle injuries. Face your partner at a distance of three to four meters. Both of you should now assume the starting position by standing on your right leg. Bend your knee and hips slightly so that your upper body leans forward. It is important that when viewed from the front, the foot, knee and hip of your supporting leg are in a straight line. Keep the weight on the ball of your foot so that your heel nearly leaves the ground or alternatively, lift your heel fully off the ground. Now throw the ball to your partner with your left hand. Your partner catches the ball with both hands and throws it back to you with his left hand. Catch the ball and repeat the exercise 10 times. Swap legs and repeat the exercise another 10 times. For this exercise, it is important that, from the front, the hip, knee and foot of your supporting leg are in a straight line. Your upper body and pelvis are stable and facing forward, your pelvis does not tilt to the side, your knee does not buckle inwards. Your hips and knee are slightly bent. You keep your weight on the ball of the foot. The quicker you can throw the ball back and forth, the more effective this exercise will be. The sixth exercise is forward bend in single leg stance. This exercise also works on your coordination, balance and strength in order to protect your ankles. As in the last exercise, face your partner at a distance of three to four meters. Both of you should now assume the starting position by standing on your right leg. Bend your knee and hips slightly so that your upper body leans forward. It is important that when viewed from the front, the foot, knee and hip of your supporting leg are in a straight line. Keep your weight on the ball of your foot so that your heel nearly leaves the ground or, alternatively, lift your heel fully off the ground. Now, throw the ball to your partner with your left hand. Your partner catches the ball with both hands, bends over and touches the ground with the ball. He then straightens up and throws the ball back with his left hand. You should both repeat this exercise 10 times each. Swap legs and repeat the exercise another 10 times each. For this exercise, it is important that, from the front, the hip, knee and foot of your supporting leg are in a straight line. Your upper body and pelvis are stable and facing forward, your pelvis does not tilt to the side, your knee does not buckle inwards. You keep your knee bent slightly, you keep your weight on the ball of the foot or lift your heel off the ground. When touching the ground with the ball, do not place your weight on the ball. Exercise number seven is called figures of eight in single leg stance. This exercise improves your coordination and balance while strengthening your leg muscles. The starting position is the same for the two previous exercises. Both of you should stand on your right leg. Bend your knee and hip slightly so that your upper body leans forward.
It is important that when viewed from the front, the foot, knee and hip of your supporting leg are in a straight line. Keep your weight on the ball of your foot so that your heel nearly leaves the ground, or alternatively, lift your heel fully off the ground. Now throw the ball to your partner with your left hand. Your partner catches the ball with both hands and passes it through his legs in a figure of eight. Firstly, around his supporting leg from behind, then under his swinging leg. He then throws the ball back with his left hand. Catch it with both hands, pass it through your legs in a figure of eight, and throw it back to your partner. When passing the ball through your legs, make sure that the knee of your supporting leg is bent and that it does not buckle inwards. When passing the ball under your other leg, stand as upright as possible and bring your leg up and forward. During this exercise, your upper body should sway back and forth as smoothly as possible. Repeat this exercise 10 times each. Swap legs and repeat the exercise another 10 times each. Make sure that, from the front, the hip, knee and foot of your supporting leg are in a straight line. Your upper body and pelvis are stable and facing forward your pelvis does not tilt to the side, your knee does not buckle inwards. You keep your knee slightly bent, you keep your weight on the ball of the foot or lift your heel fully off the ground. Exercise number eight, jumps over a line. This exercise improves your jumping power and technique. Stand alongside a line at a distance of 20 centimeters. Assume the starting position with your feet shoulder width apart. Bend your knees and hips slightly so that the upper body leans forward. It is important that when viewed from the front, your feet, knees and hips are in two straight lines. Keep your arms bent at the side of your body. Now jump sideways back and forth over the line. Make sure that you always push off with both feet and that you always land on the balls of both feet. Bend your knees and hips to cushion each landing and to gain momentum for the next jump. Do 10 jumps in each direction as quickly as possible. Now turn around so that you are facing the line 20 centimeters away from it. Again, jump 10 times over the line in both directions. Make sure that your hips and knees are slightly bent. You push off with both feet and land softly on the balls of both feet with your knees bent. You do not land with extended knees or on your heels. Your hips, knees and feet form two parallel lines. Your knees never touch. A powerful takeoff and a cushioned landing are more important than how high you jump. The ninth exercise is called zigzag shuffle. This exercise improves your jumping power and technique. In an area 10 meters wide and 20 meters long, place six markers in a zigzag formation. At the start of the course, position yourself so that your shoulders are pointing towards the first marker and then assume the starting position with your feet shoulder width apart. Bend your knees and hips so that your upper body is leaning substantially forward with your back straight. Most of your weight should be on the balls of your feet. This will allow you to achieve the low center of gravity required for this exercise. Now, sidestep shuffle to the first marker. When you reach the first marker, turn so that your shoulders are pointing towards the next marker. Use the same technique to move from marker to marker as quickly as possible. Complete the course twice. Your hips and knees should stay bent. Make sure that you push off and land on the balls of both feet. Also make sure that your upper body is leaning forward with your back straight. Your hips and knees are substantially bent. You push off and land on the balls of both feet. You land with knees bent to cushion impact. Your knees do not buckle inwards. You do not land with extended knees or on your heels. The tenth and final exercise is called bounding. 
This exercise also improves your jumping power and technique. Position yourself at the start of an area measuring around 30 meters. Your aim is to complete this course with a succession of high long jumps. Assume the starting position by standing on your supporting leg with your upper body upright. When viewed from the front, the foot, knee and hip of your takeoff leg are in a straight line. Push off as powerfully as possible. Bring the knee of your swinging leg as high as possible and keep your opposite arm bent in front of your body. When you lift your right leg, lift your left arm at the same time. Land as softly as you can on the ball of your swinging foot. Make sure that your knee bends on landing, but that it does not buckle inwards. Repeat the exercise. Make sure that you bring your jumping leg and the opposite arm up to the front at the same time. Your knee is bent on landing, but does not buckle inwards. You land on the ball of your foot to cushion impact. From the front, the hip, knee and foot of your takeoff leg are in a straight line. Fair play is the 11th way to avoid sports injuries. Many football injuries are caused by fouls. Playing by the rules and showing sportsmanship for your fellow players are the best ways to reduce the number of injuries. Of course, you should also protect yourself with shin guards and high quality equipment. Play fair to keep yourselves and your fellow players fit and healthy and to enjoy the game of football.